The Montreal Canadiens suck right now, and these are 13 observations from their first 13 games. Hey, everybody, I'm Rick. Welcome to Talking Habs, where you get your daily fix of Blue Blah Rouge. All right, so these are 13 observations I've had over the first 13 games. Montreal is definitely not playing up to the standard we thought they would be at, uh, considering the Stanley Cup final appearance last season. Uh, they weren't very good last season during the regular season. Uh, that's true. But after that Stanley Cup run, we thought that we were going to have a really good team. Uh, the uh, the uh, off-season acquisitions looked pretty good. Um, and yeah, I do. I just I I had a lot more hope for how this team would play, um, which isn't very good right now. And in the first thirteen games, they have three wins, ten losses. And the thing is, you know, in their in their wins, they look really good, and then they just totally crap the bed the next game, or they start off a game that they that they do end up losing. Start off with a really good first period, and then it just goes downhill from there, which is what happened on Saturday. They had a great first period, as a matter of fact, out shooting the opposition 20 to 1, leading to nothing. And then the second period rolled around, and it was like someone brought in another team, and it was like a peewee team, and they were playing. And that's what it was like. And I don't know the answer. I'm going to try to figure out some of it here in my 13 observations, and let's get right into them. David Savard looks like Carl Osner 2.0. He is slow. He's not physical where he was advertised as a physical player. I haven't seen it. There's no offense from him, but we knew that coming in. He is literally a pylon out there. Uh, players just skating around him. He stands around not looking like he doesn't know where he should be, out of position, making mistakes, um, taking bad penalties. Uh, this is not the guy that I thought we had picked up. I really did. He, he came off of a uh, Stanley Cup run, winning the Stanley Cup with Tampa Bay uh, last season. And um, I don't know what the scouts saw in him and why they signed him, but Dav David Savard, Carl Alsner 2.0. Nick Suzuki is an elite hockey player. Nick Suzuki is going to be that complete package. I think he's showing it already. He is on pace this season. For 70 points, he started his career um, with 41 points in 71 games uh, in, in that first shortened season before COVID, um, well, the COVID season. Uh, the next season, 56 games, he had um, 41 points again, but that was in 56 games. His pace was a 60-point pace in an 82-game season. And this season, at the beginning of the year, he started with no points in his first five game, four games. And then he proceeded to get 12 points in his next nine. He has 12 points in 13 games. He's on pace for a 70-point season right now. And it wouldn't shock me by the end of the year. He improves even on that. And he's right around, if not at that point-a-game player. So I believe that Nick Suzuki will end up being a superstar player uh, by the time he is finished his career. He's No, he's not a generational player. No, I didn't say that. But he'll be a superstar. This kid's got the talent, and he puts it to use. He, he he is the only one this season, the only bright spot this season. I tried to find two others. I wanted to find three bright spots for each win. They've got three, and I couldn't. I couldn't. Nick Suzuki's the only one. He is an elite player. Signing players, coaches, or general managers just because they're French is a huge mistake. It's quite obvious this season when um, – I'll, I'll go back to say the, before the season started, the Quebec Premier, Francois Legault, who was a big Montreal Canadiens fan, he made it aware that he would like to see more French-Canadian players on the team and that there's a lot of good French players coming out of Quebec, and there's no reason why Montreal shouldn't have some of them. And then Marc Bergevin proceeded to go sign a bunch of players, I think five in to all told, which I three of them are on the team and two guys in the minors. And... Um, that hasn't worked. David Savard and Cedric Paquette haven't really lived up to any of their expectations. Matthew Perot had a pretty good start overall. Uh, he's out with an injury right now. Um, as far as coaches and GMs, we all know the controversy there where the French media wants to can't have a coach or a GM here who doesn't speak French or who isn't French. 
And it hasn't really worked out great for Montreal over time. And it's not to say that French players or French coaches or GMs aren't quality and aren't winners. I'm not saying that. But if that's the only reason that you're bringing them in, well, you're you're reducing your chance to win and for them to be winners. It doesn't work, and I wish they would stop doing it. Coach Dom is not an NHL caliber coach. This is the conclusion I'm coming to at this point. We're almost 15 games into the season. There's got to be a point where if the team isn't responding by that point, is it the coach? Is it all the players on the team? Is it, like, what is it? I happen to think at this point we're starting to see that the team's not responding to anything the coaching staff is doing, obviously. They might have a good game. They might have a good period here and there, and they just can't follow that up with anything. And after 13 games, you got to figure by this point the coaching staff should have some effect on how this team is playing. You should, should see some form of an improvement. I know they have a lot of injuries right now. They lost a lot of leadership, which is a problem. But there should be some kind of an improvement due to the coaching staff, and I'm not seeing it. And I'm starting to say, I'm starting to think in my head that, yes, this coaching staff is not good. And it, it is not it is not going to get the job done. Mark Bergevin will be fired by the end of this calendar year. I, I think Mark Bergevin, I wouldn't be surprised, let's put it this way, that tomorrow morning I'm filming this on a Sunday. Monday morning I wake up to read that Mark Bergevin has been let go. Um, I'm not saying that I do expect that to happen tomorrow, but it wouldn't surprise me. And I do believe that if this team cannot turn it around uh, by in the next little while, he's going to be let go. He is a lame duck GM right now in, in the fact that it's his last year, uh, last contract year. Uh, he refused to sign a contract offer that they gave him. And I just don't see with the way the team is going, the moves that he made have just totally been the wrong one so far. And he's going to pay the price for that. And it's time after 10 years to move into a new direction with a new uh, GM and a new coach, probably from that GM's choice. And I think that's where we're going to end up before the end of the season. My problem with all that is that this is probably what's going to work out, right? Because um, everybody wants to see Montreal get that high draft pick next season, um, next draft, and get Shane Wright or, you know, hopefully get somebody like that. I could see Montreal making the change, making maybe the change at coach, turning things around somewhat, and moving up and, and getting a middle-of-the-road draft pick in the end. Instead of, you know, just go with the flow for the rest of the season and get a good draft pick. I don't, you know, why not? You need to get these top draft picks in order to build from the draft. you got to build with quality picks. Maybe it's time for them to do that. Subscribe and ring that notifications bell. And hey, give a thumbs up. Carey Price at his best wouldn't make much difference to this team right now. Carey Price, even playing the way he did last season in the playoffs, if he was in Nets from day one here, I don't know that it would be that much better. We'll have, what, one more win, maybe an extra point, a uh, loser point or two. So it'll be a little bit better, but I don't think that much. Even Carey Price, at his best, cannot save the team from the lousy defense, from the lack of offense, from the looking like they're lost. Um like, I, you know, I just don't know how that would make a difference if he was in that. I know a lot of people are saying that. Can't wait to get Carrie, pre Carrie back. But honestly, I don't think it'll make a difference right now. Habs video coach has to have been showing old Keystone Cops movies instead of game tape. Has to be. I'm telling you, put put Habs uniforms on those guys, and that's that's what's going on here right now. They're running around like chickens without their heads, banging into each other. I mean, literally, they're doing that on the ice, just that they have no flow, no system, and I don't know what's going on. And if that's not the coach, I don't know.
at this point i don't know we want you to become a member of talking halves cole caulfield needs to stay in laval until someone cleans this mess up i'm really glad at this point that cole caulfield was sent back to laval he was losing his confidence um, I don't think that's good for a guy in his rookie season, a guy with such high expectations that we have on him. Uh, so I think it's best for him to be in Laval. They're playing better. They seem to be a much more um, together team, and uh, that's got to be a much better atmosphere for him. Let him stay there until such time as this team has turned it around enough for him to not be ruined by what's going on here. So I think he should stay in Laval probably for the whole season and come back up next year after he has been dominating in Laval, uh, owning that ice down there, and then let him come up here and be fully ready. And hopefully the team will have turned things around enough so that, you know, he can keep his confidence and not be ruined by what's going on here. Habs will be releasing a new book next season and maybe out in time for the Christmas season. They're in research mode right now, and it's going to be called... The 100 Best Ways to Lose a Hockey Game. Uh, like I said, they're researching that right now. They need leadership and should name a captain. Uh, as much as, you know, um, Shea Weber is uh, being honored by uh, remaining as the captain for the whole season, unless they know for sure that Shea Weber will be back, say by the end of the season if they're going to make playoffs, or for next season, unless they know that for sure, I think they should name a captain and uh, to help turn this around. There's no leadership on this team. And I think having uh, that leadership in place from the top down, right, captain, assistants, and all that, now um, I think it can help. I'm not saying it would turn them around completely, but I think it's one of those things that they should do to help turn this, this team around. They seem to have modeled their defense after the 1980s Edmonton Oilers, who their defense model was, we'll just score one more than the other team. Now, that doesn't really work for Montreal because we can't score, but it's the other side where they don't play defense. So between the Edmonton Oilers in the 1980s and their offense after the 1997-98 Tampa Bay Lightning, who averaged 1.8 goals per game, you could say the next year's halves at 2.2 goals per game, but so the 1997-98 Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, and see if this doesn't sort of, um, it's kind of a lot like what Montreal is going through this year. By far the worst offensive mark of the modern era as things really hit rock bar bottom for the Lightning in 97-98. You aren't going to win very often scoring less than two a game. Sound familiar? And the Lightning finished dead last in the standings as well as many other offensive categories. They were shut out a league high 11 times that year and finished dead last in goals scored with 151, power play goals scored with 33, and power play percentage 9.35. In fact, that anemic power play percentage mark still stands as the worst all time to this day. The payoff for this futility, getting Vinny LeCavalier Number one overall in the draft. And that sounds familiar with everybody saying, get Shane Wright, tank and get Shane Wright, get Shane Wright. That, I mean, you know, it goes in line with that. For the 1998-99 Montreal Canadiens, 2.2 goals per game. Despite being a bad offensive team, the 98-99 Montreal Canadiens weren't horrific overall as they finished the year just seven games under the 500 mark. Their 32, 39, and 11 record wasn't enough to get into the playoffs. And for a franchise as storied as Montreal, putting together their worst season in over 40 years was embarrassing. Not one Montreal player scored more than 17 goals that year. And when your team leader in points has just 47 to his credit, that was Mark Recchi, you know the year was very bad from an offensive perspective. Something they don't want to repeat again. But seems like they're doing that. We're somewhere around, two, I think it was going into last game, uh, last night's game was 2.00 goals per game, and they scored two, so uh, that stays the same. So they're right there. In order for Montreal to hit 100 points, and I think it'll take 100 points uh, for third 
place in the Atlantic division, that I think will be the mark to get into the playoffs. I tend to think that probably there won't be a four teams coming out of the Atlantic division and probably be five from Metro and three, the top three from the Atlantic. So a hundred points would be as an example, 45 wins, 27 losses, 10 overtime or shootout losses. That's a hundred points. So they would get that and a playoff spot. The 3 10 and 0 halves will have to go 42, 17, and 10 the rest of the way. That's an over 0.700 winning percentage pace. They would have to win 42 of their remaining 69 games. And considering how the team has been playing up to now, I cannot see that at all being what happens. Subscribe and ring that notifications bell. And hey, give a thumbs up. This is without a doubt the softest Habs team in years that I have seen. There is no pushback on their part and they can't handle any pushback from opponents. I just like that squishy sound those ducks make. Montreal Canadiens, uh, to quote a former coach, uh, Terrien, they're the softest team. They're so soft. This team is just so soft. Yeah, they're just they're soft. There's no pushback. I don't see the physical play. Um, I I don't. I was hoping Michael Pizzetta would come in and sort of give them that boost. In the two games he's been here so far, I haven't really seen that. I've seen it in him, but I haven't seen that take hold in the team at all yet. So hopefully that'll happen because uh, they are they are just horribly soft and they're not going to win very much being soft like that. That I can guarantee you. And um, yeah, so those are my 13 observations in the first 13 games. Let me know what you guys have observed that I haven't. Uh, let me know if you agree with mine in the comment section below. And um, yeah, that's it. Stay safe out there. And until the next video, peace out, y'all. And I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Uh, don't want that in there. That should be an observation. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hey, check out that video over there.